Oregon, Oregon State coming up on uh, this weekend. James Voss on the line from Autzen Zoo talking up uh, the Civil War. So this is a rivalry weekend across the country. Everybody's got their their various angles and slants on their region, their state, what makes it special. So if you could size this one up uh, in regards to not necessarily the football teams themselves, but the tradition, the history, the prestige, uh, the the uh, healthy hate, uh, what, mm -hmm. what distinguishes this one? Absolutely. Uh, and I think uh, in the last 10 years, it's certainly changed even uh, how I was raised in this rivalry with Oregon State. Uh, I grew up in Portland. Both my parents grew up in Eugene. But growing up in Portland, it's about a 50-50 split. Uh, you go to school and you got the Oregon State fans and the Oregon fans and uh, you're always at each other's throats. It usually goes on healthily throughout the year. Your team won, our team lost, or or oh, it's a good weekend when uh, the Beavers win and the Ducks lose, or vice versa. Uh, uh, there's a lot of that definitely expressed, and in the last uh, ten years or so, it's definitely uh, uh, changed into uh, much more of a. And I don't mean this in any sort of slander to uh, Oregon State, but in a lot of ways, a, a, a little program, big program, uh, just in terms of resources, in terms of success, uh, uh, different things playing out the way that they have. Uh, I grew up where uh, the Civil War was one where you split. Uh, Oregon State wins at Oregon State, and Oregon wins uh, when they're playing in Austin. Uh, that was just the way that you kind of expected, and if something else happened, uh, it was a big surprise. It was a big deal, uh, and uh, now, Really, the last uh, the last time Oregon State won uh, against Oregon was in Reeser, uh, in Corvallis, and uh, that was in 2016 when Oregon uh, only won four games that year, and that was Mark Helfrich's last game as Oregon's head coach. Uh, uh, there's definitely uh, a, a, a healthy amount of hate and probably a good amount of resentment from Oregon State fans towards Oregon, and uh, it's probably very much deserved. Uh, there are plenty of Oregon fans in this state that uh, have gotten uh, really confident and really cocky uh, after the success. And it's hard, uh, I'm sure, being the, the program that has fallen on hard times. But I mean, what Jonathan Smith is doing with that program, if we just even want to uh, step in into that just a little bit, I think he uh, has them on a serious upswing. He's been targeting transfers and junior college players in a way that I think is really smart for a school like Oregon State and uh, an athletic department that may not always be fully organized. There, He's finding a way to win games uh, or to at least be in games that they haven't been really in the last three years. Uh, and uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting and exciting to see uh, what Jonathan Smith has brought there because he was obviously a part of a really successful period or in the early 2000s under Dennis Erickson uh, when he played as the quarterback at Oregon State and uh, he knows that it's possible to win there uh, and he's really brought that attitude there and it's it's pretty pretty exciting to see in the state. Absolutely I don't think uh, college football nation across the nation is giving the due that is deserved at Jonathan Smith. I don't think this is gaining much attention right now. Uh, if they can pull off the big upset Saturday, they're going to postseason play and maybe they'll get a little bit of attention because of that. But, you know, as you mentioned, over the last three years, this has been one of the woeful programs in college football. This has been the Rutgers of the West, mm -hmm. you know, like bottom five offensive and defensive rankings. I think I saw something recently where their two year defensive performances was one of the worst uh, in terms of the advanced metrics in the history of college football. Just awful. Jonathan Smith takes over, and uh, sure, he took some rough rides uh, last year. Of course he would. Uh, you can't turn things. It's almost like a year zero with a program mm -hmm. like this. It's almost not even year one. You can't even look at the record. You know, you got to change the culture, the environment, the terminology, just get people buying into what you're selling. And uh, obviously he had a success as a quarterback, uh, for those of you younger than maybe 25 or 30, uh, believe me, Oregon State was uh, to be reckoned with in the early 2000s. This guy had a team that was uh, ranked in the top five in the nation, won a Fiesta Bowl over Notre Dame, the whole deal. They were really good at that time. And now I'm looking at uh, Jake Luton, for example. Uh, this guy just looked like a, a pedestrian quarterback a couple of years ago. He's throwing up a 28 touchdown, three interception season. 
Artavius Pierce is a good running back. Uh, Isaiah Hodgins with 78 catches. Uh, it's fun to see that uh, I, I don't think they're going to get it done in regards to getting to a bowl game this year because of obviously the huge underdog status they have in this one going to Eugene. But even to finish four and five in the Pac-12, right now they're four and four, to be in second place over the likes of Washington, Stanford, mm -hmm. Cal's upcoming with Justin Wilcox, or so we thought, uh, in Washington State, of course, who won 11 games last year, is just astounding. Absolutely. And I think last night, heartbreaking uh, for Oregon State to be up in that game and then to end up losing by one point, and that was bowl eligibility on the line for both teams, Oregon State and Washington State. And uh, uh, I think they, they, they came back and they hit their peak just a little early, early last night uh, uh, and gave Anthony Gordon too much time. Uh, and, and Anthony Gordon's a heck of a quarterback. But uh, uh, you mentioned Jake Luton, and you also see Oregon State scored 53 points last night. And I know that's Washington State, but that's not something uh, you're talking about last year or the year before uh, when they hired Jonathan Smith. And I think there's a lot of folks in Seattle that are saying, you know, we really complained about Jonathan Smith, uh, but he was the offensive coordinator there. Uh, and, and clearly he wasn't the problem because he's got Oregon State's offense rolling. He's got Oregon State believing uh, that they are this incredible downfield passing team. And, it, and Luton's having an incredible season, but he's also had a really uh, difficult career, dealt with injury uh, the whole time. And uh, Isaiah Hodgins, I think, unfortunately, there are guys named Jerry Judy uh, and CeeDee Lamb. Uh, but I think if I were to have a vote for the Bolitnikoff Award, uh, he would be the guy who receives it because uh, he's incredible. And I, I really, uh, uh, I, I love the receivers at Oregon, but dang, I wish Herbert got to throw to him a little bit. Yeah, that's obviously been a trouble spot for you. Juwan Johnson has helped uh, things uh, considerably this year, but the drops the last two years and the injuries at the wide receiver core has been and has definitely hurt the Ducks and hurt you against Auburn in particular. Uh, looking at this matchup against Oregon State, is there uh, any consideration that uh, there should be any any concern for Oregon fans going into this one? I know that uh, the Oregon State story is a great one, but uh, should there be any concern? And beyond that, uh, I guess a Pac-12 championship is the obvious goal uh, and uh, taking on Utah, who's going to be gunning most likely unless they get upset for a possible college football playoff appearance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think you watched the tape from last night. Uh, and I, I think this team, this Oregon team is uh, somebody who can look at the tape and see where they made their mistakes, especially uh, this secondary uh, that Jaden Daniels really took advantage of last night deep multiple times. Uh, uh, the double moves that the receivers are running, uh, Arizona State has, has, has real playmakers, and so does Oregon State. I think uh, if I'm Oregon State and I'm looking at the tape from last night, I, I would call our sec the Oregon secondary uh, vulnerable, uh, at least uh, attempt to attack that. And whether or not uh, Andy Avalos, uh, the defensive coordinator for Oregon, and uh, uh, the rest of the Oregon secondary adjust and uh, takes this week uh, to figure out what went wrong, and I, which I think they will. Um, uh, I think there's a high chance that you're going to see Jake Luton and Isaiah Hodgins and that Oregon State offense really uh, attack Oregon deep, which is something they've really been successful with in, in the passing game. Uh, their offense has been dynamic, which is is an incredible sentence to say uh, here at the end of November, but you're absolutely right seeing them at the end, uh, uh, right there in the thick of the Pac-12 North, race uh, unfortunately for them it's it's locked up but uh, uh serious consideration uh, should be given for this game to be uh, uh not a blowout like it has in the last two years uh because i think i think you could you could see potentially oregon state scoring 20 27 points in this one the unfortunate aspect of rivalry week is obviously if you love college football and you try to soak them all up, you just can't. It's impossible. Everybody plays at the same time. It's a, kind of spread out from Friday to Saturday. But still, uh, this is one that uh, I would say on a national scale doesn't get its due just because you've got Auburn, Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan and all sorts of games going on. But it's uh, uh, one that uh, certainly captures the Northwest and uh, hopefully comes back to prominence, maybe not necessarily for you, James, uh, mm -hmm. the, the love the beatdown of uh, Oregon State 
every year. But uh, for the rest of us, uh, that this becomes uh, relevant uh, in terms of the scale of the Pac-12 and beyond sometime soon. And the way Jonathan Smith is working, I wouldn't uh, put it past him. James, we appreciate you stopping by. Uh, I encourage everyone to ju jump over to Autzen Zoo to uh, catch uh, James' work right there and uh, get prepped for the Civil War. James, we appreciate it. Thank you again, Mark.